you know, I, I, I told you that Louise and I, on uh, Sunday, I think it was, went to see Michael Moore's new movie, Where Should We Invade Next? And uh, which is just absolutely astonishing. It is such a brilliant movie, and it is so perfectly timed, and is so unfortunate uh, that Michael got sick with uh, pneumonia and was not able to do the 50 or so press appearances that I guess they had scheduled for him. Um, it's really a shame. But one of the things that, one of the points that was made in that movie, they went to Norway, and among other things, I mean, there's all this is just like one little tiny piece. I, I really, I, 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 I believe that I am not giving away Michael's movie. They went to Norway and looked at the prison system, and every prisoner in Norway can go to college for free. Of course, everybody in Norway can go to college for free, but. In particular, prisoners can go to college for free, and they do. And they have one of the lowest recidivism rates in the world. They also can vote. Prisoners in Norway can vote. And in fact, in Michael Moore's movie, he shows a scene where three politicians come in and have a debate in a prison in front of the prisoners to try to get their vote. Politicians campaigning in prisons. Meanwhile, in pretty much all the states of the old Confederacy, and pretty much exclusively those states, felons cannot vote. In Florida, for example, one in three African-American men of voting age, one out of three, cannot vote in the United States because of voter suppression laws, Republican voter suppression laws. In this case, uh, not voter ID laws. All, you know, which, by the way, when we were talking about the New Hampshire primary turnout the other day, I, I think I missed mentioning. Did we also mention that this was the first year that the voter suppression ID law was in place in New Hampshire, which caused long lines and a lot of people to just say, screw it. But in any case, uh, they, they, uh, a third of the African-American, the male African-American population of Florida cannot vote because of that voter suppression law that says that felons can't vote even after they're out of prison, even after they're off probation, even after they're, they're theoretically a full member of society. No, I'm sorry, you're not a member of society. You can't vote. This is so wrong. This is so wrong. I mean, this is something, particularly when you, when you look at, state, at the states where how this is applied, this only, pretty much only happens in states with large African-American populations that where the state would be a democratic state if the african american men in that state who had been arrested and you know about half of them for drug offenses had been arrested had been able to vote instead they're republican states because only white people can vote because white people don't get as arrested as often and they don't get sentenced as often and they don't get they don't go to prison as often for the exact same crimes as black people especially in the old Confederacy states. So anyhow, today in the New York Times, the editorial board, that is the entire New York Times editorial board, put forward an op-ed, an opinion piece, in which, and the, the, head, the headline is, A College Education for Prisoners. And there are just some jaw-dropping statistics in there. I mean, when you look at Norway with the recidivism rate in the single digits, you look at the United States with the recidivism rate around 80%, I think, 70, 80%, something like that. I mean, it's just mind boggling. Depends on what state you're looking at, whether it's federal or state, all those kind of things, but it's high. Listen to this. This is from today's New York Times, February, Feb 16 uh, op ed, New York Times. The most effective way to keep people out of prison once they leave prison is to give them job skills and make them marketable employees. That, in turn, means restarting prison education programs that were shuttered, as in closed, stopped, shut down, beginning in the 1990s. Now, this was a consequence in part of the various crime bills that Bernie Sanders voted for and that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton were promoting. Okay, So this is like there's this is, I think this is a, 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 arguably a great example of good intentions gone wrong. Anyhow, that in turn means restarting prison education programs that were shuttered beginning in the 1990s when federal and state legislators cut funding to show how tough they were on crime. 
President Obama pointed the country in the right direction, writes the New York Times editorial board last year, by creating a pilot program that will allow a limited number of inmates to receive federal Pell Grants to take college courses behind bars. And then it gets really interesting. First of all, in New York State, they, it costs about 60000 bucks a year to house an inmate. You can, go to, you can go to Harvard for less than that. But listen to this. This is from this New York Times op-ed today. <clears throat> a prison education program created by Bard College in 2001 boasts a remarkable recidivism rate of 4% for inmates who merely participated in the program, and 2.5% for those who earned a degree in prison. In addition, research has shown that the public saves 4 to $5 in re-imprisonment costs for every $1 it spends on prison education. This is just like free college. If you go back and you look at the GI Bill that my dad and Louise's dad both used, her dad went on to be, you know, use the GI Bill all the way through law school. No student loans. Paid for out of tax dollars, 100%. Not just school, but books and, and the equivalent in today's dollars of a couple hundred bucks a month as a stipend for, for rent and things. My dad only did it for two years, and then mom got pregnant with me, so he, he dropped out of college and went to work. But her, Louise's dad not only did his four years undergraduate, the first in his family ever to graduate from college, on the GI Bill, and then did another two years of law school and got his JD and became a lawyer and then went on to become the assistant attorney general for the state of Michigan. And what we know from the GI Bill is that for every dollar that was spent educating those young, largely men who had come back from World War II, for every dollar that was spent in the 1950s, the, 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 the late 40s, throughout the 50s, and all the way up into the early 60s, the GI Bill continued up until, I think it's 63, 64, something like that, the early 60s. For every dollar spent sending those young men to college, or men and I'm, I'm assuming there were some women who were eligible for it as well. There's certainly there was the WAC, Corps, the, you know, the Women's Air Corps and all these things. For every one dollar invested, seven dollars came back into the federal treasury during the lifetime of those people that would not have been there except for the fact that they earned more than they would have earned had they not gone to college this is a huge bfd to paraphrase joe biden and you would think that this was actually a conservative argument right i mean i could i could i, I would think that in a republican debate Somebody call Donald Trump quick. Here's another one for you, Donald. In a Republican debate, you could stand up and say, I want to save this country. I want to bring in $7 in tax revenue for every dollar I invest. And we know we can do that with absolute universal free college education. Or limited free college education as the GI Bill was. But we know we can do it. And now we find we, you know, it's it's a five to one ratio for prisoners. For every dollar you invest, you get five bucks back. Isn't that a conservative position? I mean, it's a liberal notion, I suppose. Liberal as in Thomas Jefferson and the Enlightenment. Thomas Jefferson, who founded the University of Virginia as the nation's first totally free college. It's a liberal idea to have free college, I suppose, but... If you look at the economics of it, you know, this this is something that could be easily argued. And not just for prisoners. See, here's the problem. You don't want a situation where people go out and commit a crime just to get in prison so they can get a free education. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.